All right, we love this. And for those of you who also love looking to the night sky, the planets will align for you this coming Monday. Ooh, it's called the Parade of Planets. And we have invited Dr. William from Vanderbilt Dyer Observatory to tell us all about it. Welcome back, friend. Thank you so much. Love Always having a pleasure you here. to be here. Ah, well, okay, so what does this mean, the Parade of Planets? So this is something that is not like once in a lifetime. This is where we're getting a bunch of planets in either the morning sky or the evening sky and you can see uh, at least a few of them by eye, maybe some of them with a telescope, but it's not just like one or maybe two at a time. So uh, this is gonna be the first of a, a, probably about two or three over the next uh, year, year and a half where we're gonna be able to, to see some planets. So, That's cool. Yeah. And now how can we see them? Is there a certain area we should go, like I know with uh, the solar yeah. eclipse, you know, there were very right, specific right. places that it was gonna be aligning. So this one, the, the main consideration for our, our June parade is that you need to have a good Eastern horizon because Half the planets will be up in the sky, but uh, three of them are gonna be down really low over in the eastern sky, and they're gonna rise just before the sun rises. And so this parade isn't gonna be as good as you know it, what we would like it to be. Like at the end of the year, we're gonna have another one, but um, this one you're gonna have to have telescopes, maybe even bin or binoculars to be able to see some of those planets, especially the low ones. Uh, over in the in the eastern sky. I think we have okay. a graphic too to yes, show exactly yeah. where. Oh yeah, there it is. Yeah. Oh, cool. So if we if you get out at about 4 a.m. Uh, next Monday, and and these planets will be up for you know months. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if you miss it Monday, don't worry about it. Okay. But we'll have Saturn easily visible to the unaided eye. Mars will be nice and visible. The Moon's even joining it. But you notice in between there's Neptune. Uh, that is one of the two planets that doesn't matter when you look at it, you've got to have a telescope or binoculars to even pick it out. Mm -hmm. So uh, don't expect to go out and see that one up there. Okay. So those two you'll be able to, the, the other two you'll be able to see, and then you can see how they're wow. uh, lined up there, which is pretty normal, but now they're all gathering in the, in the morning sky. But yeah, you look down there over at the lower left and you uh -huh. see Uranus, Mercury, and Jupiter right down there in the glow of the rising sun. So they're not super high up. You've got to have a good clear horizon to be able to even have a chance of seeing those. And the problem is Uranus is very dim anyway. So you're probably going to lose that in, in the glare of the rising oh, sun. Of the sun. Jupiter, you'll have a better chance at seeing, but you're probably going to have to have at least binoculars to pick it out. Mm -hmm. Mercury will be a little bit uh, fainter as well. And so on June 4th, next Tuesday, Mercury and Jupiter are like right next to one another. I mean, less than a moon width. So if you're able to find Jupiter, then it'll be a nice little signpost for you. And then the following morning, you can see how much they've moved apart. And even the moon is moving down there. So it gives you a nice perspective of just how much things change, mm -hmm. even on very short time scales. Wow, really? that's yeah. pretty amazing. So, and then by August, um, uh, we're gonna have uh, Mercury popping back up uh, in the morning sky. So we might have a chance to see uh, uh, all six of them again. And oh. those ones that were really down low, most of them will be up higher now. Okay, and they kind of look like stars, right? Yes, so Jupiter, uh, if you see it when it's nice and high, it's a really bright star. Um, uh, uh, Mars and Saturn, they'll look like moderately bright stars and you can even see a little bit of color in Mars. Uh, but yeah, don't expect to see uh, Neptune or Uranus with just the naked eye. Okay. So, okay. And then, then, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, it was yeah. in the January, yes, we're gonna yeah. do it, see it again. That's the one that I'm really excited about because this, I don't know uh, how many people like to get up early, but I enjoy the evening view. So yeah. uh, this, uh, at the Whoa. end of this year, going into like February, you're gonna have Mars, Jupiter, Uranus, Neptune, Saturn, and Venus, which is super bright, all in the evening sky. So four of those you can easily see by eye, Uranus and Neptune, still gotta have telescope, that's fine. But then by uh, the end of February, Mercury will pop back up, so you might get a chance to also see that at sunset. You better buy a lottery ticket on January 6th, wow. I Go have ahead. a question that I'm dying to ask, and yes. I'm sorry that I'm throwing this out at you, no, so I, I love apologize. Questions. Yeah. What does Mercury in retrograde mean? Oh yeah, so, um, <laughs> we say it all the time. Anytime so, something goes wrong, we're like, Mercury yeah, in retrograde, yeah, yeah, right? but what is it? <laughs> so um, normally we see the planets gradually moving through the stars and in a certain direction, but but uh, over time, they'll start, uh, one at a time, they'll start to slow down and they'll reverse direction. And before we knew what was going on, we had no idea what was causing these strange things to move.
move like that. But in fact, Mercury is still making its same way around the sun. It's just that uh, we're getting a different uh, perspective. So it's kind of like um, if you were to drive down the highway and you pass a vehicle, mm -hmm. it looks like the vehicle's moving backwards mm -hmm. with respect to you, but it's actually still moving forward. We've just passed it. In this case, Mercury is passing us. And other planets like Saturn and Jupiter, they'll also go into retrograde. Huh? Um, and you see them move backwards for a uh, you know, period of months or so, but it's it's just us passing them. They're not doing anything weird. So. Yeah. Getting yeah. answers, very good, Larissa. Okay, yeah. I'm still crying over the fact that I didn't see the Northern Lights a couple weeks ago. Um, um, explain the phenomena. Is, is there some sort of like, you know, climate? Is it because of climate change? No, it's, or? it's actually all due to our sun. So our sun has this very regular 11 year cycle where it gets really, really active and we're near that peak activity now. In fact, next year is supposed to be the peak. But um, when we have a lot of activity, we have lots of spots, we can have lots of flares, and then these big eruptions come off the sun. And if one of those big eruptions heads straight towards us and it's exceptionally large, you can get aurora that extend all the way down into the, the lower latitudes. And this one, it happened to be that there were several eruptions all together, and so they kind of pummeled the planet, and that's why we got to, to see that. Um, there was a, a big sunspot group that was responsible for those, and the, the sun had rotated around, and that's, that group disappeared from our view, but uh, that group just reappeared. And so maybe by around the end of this week, they'll be facing the Earth again. If there's a nice big eruption, we might mm. have another chance of seeing some of those aurora. This week or next week? Uh, this week. This so, week. <laughs> but again, ready. you know, we're going to have lots there. of these these sunspots coming up, and so you know, it, it wouldn't be surprising if we had more of these aurora. Oh. Uh, visible, but we might not have any more. We just don't really know. Keep your so, eyes yeah. in the sky. Definitely, Thank definitely. You all. Yes, yes. Wealth of knowledge over yeah. here. Learn more <laughs> about the universe around you and appreciate all the special events happening this year. Visit dyer.vanderbilt.edu.